Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to swap out this monitor. So this is a around 2006 era 26 inch monitor. It's so old it doesn't have HDMI on it. Um, so when I mounted this monitor it's uh, the cabling goes through the wall and at the time I was running it off of a computer so there's just a DVI and a power cable in the uh, in the wall so today we're gonna swap that out and uh, replace the cabling with an HDMI so here we go okay so we've got the TV off the wall um, so the mount that I'm using for the existing monitor is not going to work for the new one. So we need to take that off and we need to put a new monitor mount in. Um, the, only, the other thing I need to double check is this, the monitor that we're taking off the wall has an IEC power cable for it. Um, and I don't know if the new Samsung monitor that I'm going to put up has IEC or if it has a little power brick. So um, if it has a little power brick, I'm going to have to uh, extend that and and make a new make a new power cable but if we're lucky we can use the cable that's in the wall um the dvi no longer uh needs to be here since the uh, other monitor is going to be running on off hdmi so i'm going to use the old dvi cable to pull the new hdmi cable through just so that i don't have to fish tape up another wire so here's the back of the old monitor uh, one of the interesting things about pulling this monitor off is the amount of component inputs that it has. It has RGB components. It has an RS-232 control. Um, and then obviously uh, it has VGA and just S-video and the things of the day. So it's actually kind of wild. Um, it's not a commercial grade monitor, but it certainly has a lot of commercial grade inputs. So just the difference uh, between monitor connectivity over 10 years ago versus versus today it's kind of crazy everything's just over hdmi now so all right we're gonna get the uh get the monitor mount up Okay, so I measured the TV. So for a 43 inch monitor, we're looking at 38 inches wide by 22 inches tall. Um, so I've got this, these green spike marks on the corner here um, that just give me an idea of where the TV is gonna land. So I still need to figure out exactly where the mount is gonna go on the back of it. Um, but just as a reference, the green piece of spike tape on the uh, on the absorber right there, um, that's the top of the console. So the console is 48 inches high, and then just to back up a little bit, just to kind of see where we're at with the console here, that shows me exactly where we're going to be um, as far as as far as the monitor goes. Um, I have a picture that I'd like to hang above it, so I just need to make sure that we're going to have clearance. I think a little bit taller is is going to be better in this instance. Um, it's certainly going to hide the uh, the cable box or the cable punch through the wall. Um, it's just going to all depend on on where I can find studs to get them out. But I generally like to have the uh, spike tape on the wall just so that I have a good visual of where the monitor is going to end up, so that I'm not surprised when it um, when it ends up on the wall. So we're going to uh, figure out our mount placement now.
Okay, so we've got the mount portion that attaches to the wall attached. Um, it's a little bit off center between the two sound absorbers, but I had to do that so that the holes would line up so that I could get studs in all four lag bolt positions. So when I pulled the DDI out of the wall, I just used that as an opportunity to run my HDMI. Uh, so that's in there. Um, I'm going to use this existing uh, long IEC cable that's in the wall just to pull uh, my remaining cables. And then as far as cabling goes, um, I need to actually splice. Um, I have a roll of a 14.3 SJO cable that I'm going to use to splice. Um, the uh, Samsung outlet on the, uh, the TV is just a little infinity thing, so unfortunately I can't use the... Um, I see that's in the wall, and then I also have my uh, Philips Hue cable to use also, and I'm going to run hardwired Ethernet up to the monitor because I figure if we're this far, we might as well do it. So um, I'm going to use the IEC cable that's in the wall to pull it, and I actually have a little brush panel that's going to go in this uh, new workbox here. So uh, we're going to splice the power cables now. Okay, so we've got the TV mounted. Um, ran into a little bit of problems with the mount and the Philips Hue lights of all things. Um, generally, mounts come with every possible screw that you would need except this one. Um, this monitor requires uh, pretty long M8 screws uh, to, to fit into the back of it, so I had to run to the hardware store and buy some. Um, and then the, uh, the Hue lights, the... Um, the little power connector that, um, or excuse me, the power cable that connects the uh, power supply and the lights themselves on this new model, the cord isn't interchangeable. So I didn't realize that because both the ends looked almost the same. So 
Uh, if you're installing hue lights, just something to be aware of. Um, I had to uh, refish that up through the wall, which was not the funnest thing in the history of the world. Um, so here's the exit. Um, I installed a little brush plate here just to keep everything nice and neat. So uh, this is power for the monitor. The white cable is power for the hue lights. Uh, the braided cable is the HDMI, and then there's a gray uh, Ethernet cable in there. So I've got this plugged in. I made a little label here that says TV power, just so that if you are trying to understand what you might be unplugging, it's the TV. Um, I may put a quad box in here. Um, I'm thinking that now this, because the duplex is already filled up with just the lights and the TV, power is going to be pretty scarce. So anyway, here's the, uh, the TV install. Um, hope to catch you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by.